Okay, welcome to Physics from 5 Chapter 4 Quick Scheme where we go through a really quick scheme and it's all like a revision, not really detailed explanation. Okay, let's go to the properties of cathode ray where you have to remember about four things, but in exam you only need to remember like two of them, which is fast moving electrons, it travels in a straight line, yeah, moving electron, of course, electron travels in a straight line. They're negatively charged, it can be deflected by magnetic field. These three most of the time will allow you to earn your marks. Basically, I will say again, negatively charged, deflect by, um, deflected by a magnetic field, and then it has a fast moving electron, so it travels in a straight line. But the other is just for your other information, or in case you need to write five of them. So it's like, well, it produces light when it strikes a fluorescent screen, which is exactly what is your lamp made of, you know, all this long tube. Yeah, it's fluorescent screen. So the arcade ray that hits it, and it becomes white light thing. Okay, and the next thing is going to be your X-ray. So, how do you produce all this X-ray? Well, you use the same thing as a, but it, it doesn't hit the fluorescent skin. Fluorescent skin, it hit and heavy, a uh, heavy metal, and it produces those X-ray. Thing. Okay, let's be done with that. Okay, next thing is going to be your CRO, which is the cathode oscilloscope. It can do treating, um, which is like a lot of things actually. So, one of them is measure the duration of time where you just clap, clap, and then you see the waveform there, like chick and chick, another two high one. You measure the distance between two high one and you calculate their time, which we will cover later. And we know why it's that small duration of time. The next thing is going to be the test electronic equipment, which basically just test and make sure that it's still working. Yeah, and then the last one is the voltage waveform. This is the greatest use of it. You can see the voltage waveform, and if it's an AC, you see like this, and yeah, a lot of this. So CRO, three things, duration of time, test electronic equipment, and the voltage waveform. Now moving on to the third point that we are trying to discuss here, we will go through it very quick and very efficient. So period, as we have known already, period is like the time taken for you to complete one oscillation, which means it has to be back at the same point. So same point, same point, no, this is only like half of it and it goes back one cycle. So ching, okay, one period. Or you can go like, um, chi, or you can go like yeah, here, ching, one cycle. It's all the same, but you, I, I suggest you to take this this S shape. It's far more convincing. Convincing. You also look at our sine graph. So basically, period means you use you measure this. You measure how many blocks are there. You times one block equal to how many milliseconds. Then afterward, you convert them to second. This step is very important. Converting it to second because you need to find the frequency and you need to use one over period, which is supposed to be your in your second, the SI unit. Now the next thing is basically about peak to peak potential difference and peak to peak potential difference. Peak to peak basically means peak to peak to peak. So it's the whole thing here. This is the peak to peak potential difference and peak potential difference is this thing. The way of finding them is similar where you measure how many blocks are there here and then you just multiply with how much it covers for per block. And then you have your root mean square and then yeah, root mean square basically just mean uh, uh, you use 1 over square root of 2 times V or times I. It just works that way. Don't ask me why. I didn't bother to find it out. It just works like 1 over square root of 2. That's why we say root square. Root square. And I think I sort of remember the mean as 1 over. Yeah. You, you can find out more about it and you will remember it forever. But maybe we should just study. Unless you plan further on physics. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Which is about doping. Doping is just adding impurities to increase the conductivity. Yeah. And uh, we are talking about the diode here, I mean semiconductor here. And then we have the semiconductor diode which actually makes, has two functions, it allows ratification and it flows in one, it allows the wave, I mean the waveform to flow in one direction. So when we talk about ratification, it's kind of like the same thing, it kind of looks like this, right? Yeah. But we are trying to change it to this. So you can have half wave ratification where let's say these two pens are your wire and you put the diode here and then it only allow the top half to pass through so your wave will look like this. So if you want to do a full wave, you kind of need a complex circuit where they are like the wire are like a, in a diamond shape where you put four of the diode. It's quite um, not to say hard to understand if you will have the time to stare at the circuit. It basically just means that the circuit goes around, or this current goes around in the loop and each of them are fully converted upside down so it gets a full wave. And then afterward you have the smooth wave just insert the capacitor. Capacitor is something that store the voltage and remove it, store and remove it. So it's like, yeah, this part here is removed, here is store all the extra, so you can smooth it out. Now the next thing to talk about is transistor. Transistor, most of the time we will just come up with a question where we need to know whether it can be on, it can be off and stuff like that. So to remember it, I would say, um, the depending factor depend on your bottom one. That's yeah. The depending factor depend on your bottom one. But basically, the up one it just depends. Like up one can alter the bottom one, and then the bottom one decide the middle. 
So the up one is going to be like the higher the voltage at the up, the lower the voltage at the bottom. The lower the voltage at the up, the higher the voltage at the bottom. It's like the opposite. So afterwards, this, if it is high, it will allow this particular middle one to have a high current as well and it will turn it on. If this is low, this will high, yeah, turn it on. If this is high, this will be low and this middle one will be low as well and it will be off. So basically if you want to make sure that it's like when it's bright on, when it's um, this is only talking about when VB is actually the influencing factor. But if we want to like keep it work, a uh, practical example would be to put LDR here. LDR where when it is bright, it has a high resistance. And when it is bright, it has a high resistance. And it goes off. When it is dark, it has a low resistance. So it has a higher current, so it goes on. Okay, let's talk about logic gate right here where Logic gate basically it just means converting 0 to 1 and these are the 5 for you to re re revise yourself. Or basically, you always remember R is curve 1 because if you put an O here, yeah, if you put an O there, it looks like the O fits in. And if you N here, you can see the D actually matches the shape of it. That's how I remember it. Or N, not, you put a dot here, nor, it's the same thing as R, just put a dot, stand for not, NAN, do the same thing. Okay.